Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. I know, it's like the Wizard of Oz. It starts off black and white, it goes to glorious Technicolor, but there are no red shoes. Which is debatable, uh, but, but no red shoes. As you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. This is a collab. It is a palette bingo. And I am collabing with the beautiful Anna, who's had a bit of a hiatus from YouTube, but she's back. And we are using the Wet n Wild Bretman Rock Jungle Rock palette to create our looks today. So, as I have said, uh, for some considerable time, oft here echoed on other less imaginative channels. But I'm backed up by Sammy the Sloth Straw. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Right, okay. I will have shown you the outside of this in the intro. I'm pretty sure most of you will have already seen this, know what this looks like. It's not a new palette. Uh, it's one that I picked up from Beauty Bay when they had a sale on. They had like a 40% off on a load of palettes. And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's anything on there that I've liked in the past but never picked up because I thought I like it but not for that price. This was on there. The price it was at, I was happy to pay. This is the Bretman Rock X Wet n Wild Jungle Rock palette. And uh, this is what she looks like. And my, I was watching Anna's video. Um, she's not been on YouTube for quite a while. She's still been on Insta, but she's not been on YouTube for a while because she hadn't been well. And all of a sudden, she's back. And I'm like, yay, she's back. So I messaged her because I noticed that she had this palette and she hadn't used hers much, if at all. So I'm like, do you fancy doing a collab and doing a palette bingo with it? And she's like, oh my goodness, yes, I'd love to. So that's what we're going to be doing. The colours that, <laughs> that I pulled really helpfully, none of which really go together. So I'm going to have fun and games today. I got, starting from here, going across, the mats that I'd pulled are Venomous, which is the green, Flaming Ho, which is the pink, and then Deeper, which is the blue. And the two shimmers are Liar and a Cheetah, which is the pinky rose gold one, and King of the Jungle, which is the gold one on the end there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have fun and games trying to get these to work together. But, that's part of the fun of a palette bingo. You never know what you're going to pull. And I've been so lucky with my palette bingos recently. I just thought, you know, there's, there's, it's going to come. I'm going to get some dodgy colours. And apparently today's the day I'm getting the dodgy colours. Fabulous. Uh, if it turns out crap, I'll just claim that I wanted it to look crap because it's a Halloween look. So, <laughs> just to give you a heads up. Um, now, from swatching these, obviously you can't always go by swatches. The only reason really that I swatch them is so I can see what colour they are on my skin. Because they can look different to how they appear in the pan. And... They felt very, very dry. 
so I'm expecting it either to not pick up very well on the brush or to get a shit ton of fallout. As always, I did my eyes before my base anyway, so it's not a huge issue. But rather than going in with a super fluffy brush like I would normally do, I'm going to go in with a more tapered one just to try and um, maximise the colour and minimise the fallout. Fingers crossed. Right. Uh, this is still a teaching channel. My chronic pain means that I can't uh, go as quickly as a lot of people do. Um, but when I started my channel, when I was first learning all these different techniques from various different YouTubers and then adapting them to make them work, um, it was very difficult to find someone who actually showed you the whole process. So you're like, how long does it actually take to blend? So that was my issues. Um, and I was determined that if I started a channel, if I was brave enough to start a channel, I would make sure that I showed all of the blending so you can see exactly how long it takes to do an eye look. Obviously, it's not the whole length of the film because you've got me chatting at the start and you've got me chatting at the end, but you know, roughly half the length of the film is the application process to give you a rough clue. Now, the other thing that I noticed is a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself um, were saying they had hooded eyes because the way that eyeshadow wears on them through the day is very similar, but the actual application method that you need to use for those eye types is very different to get the best look out of them. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute where I talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and the workaround for each eye type. Once that has finished playing, I'll be back to put some coloured pigments on my eyelids. Now, other disclaimer is that I zoom in really tight. It is just my eyes on screen. This is so if your eyesight's not too good and you're watching me on your phone, you can see what's going on. This does mean when I'm looking down to change brush or put more pigment on, you get a shot of my hairline. I apologise for that, but the trade-off with being able to see what I'm doing, I think is worth it. Right, okay. Here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. 
because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open so two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues hey my lovelies I am back okay um, I was having a think about how I'm going to get these colours to blend together because what I always do with um, palette bingos is I pull the numbers literally as I'm applying my primers and eyelid primer so I don't have a lot of time to think about what I'm going to do and I prefer that because more times than off than ever if I think about what I'm going to do I then don't like the look that I've done if I just go in and go instinctively I normally much prefer the look I must admit I was hoping to get two of the same colour like you know two greens two blues two purples two reds but sadly that was not the case so I am going to start off with venomous which is the green quite a lot of kick up in the pan that's okay I just tap back off into the pan and then I can just pick that up when I need to build up or do the next eye now I always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible when you've got nice long length brushes like this I tend to sort of rest the very end of it against the palm of my hand which also helps stabilise it we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, fleckle when we get there, and a reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do this instead of the windshield wiper is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers that have always been slim, that have very flexible eyelids. Um, and this is just a way that it gently moves the skin of your brow around and just helps prevent that barcoding that you can get. Right, so I'm going to start this sort of halfway between my brow and my crease line. I always start at the outer edge 
because if you do dollop too much down it's much easier to deal with when you haven't got your nose in the way yeah as I thought this is this is not really wanting to lay down pigment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pat the pigment on and then try blending so I'm going to treat it almost like a pressed pigment palette and while I'm doing this I will have a chat to you about Anna. Now regular viewers will know I collab with a lot of Swedish YouTubers that's because I watch a lot of Swedish YouTubers. Now I don't know whether it's because in a previous life I was Swedish or if I just like the accent or if it's because the majority of the Swedish in fact all of the Swedish YouTubers that I watch love colour. They're not frightened of colour at all. Uh, they have more colourful palettes than they do neutral which is pretty much the same as me. Um, now whether that's because being as far north as they are they get less daylight in the winter so they like brighter colours to cheer themselves up I'm not entirely sure but I collab with a lot of Swedish YouTubers and I'd watched Anna for quite a while <clears throat> and then she disappeared from YouTube but she was still posting on Instagram so I was still interacting with her posts over there and you know liking looks that she'd done and bits and bobs and then all of a sudden she appeared in my suggested newsfeed. This is really patchy. Really not very happy with this at all. It's not as patchy in real life as it looks on the screen. But it's not great. This bit here particularly just keeps this here seems to be settling into a line that won't blend out and this here just blends away so hopefully when I blend the other colours in I can disguise that a little bit but so far I'm not very impressed with this palette and I'm really glad I didn't pay full price for it and it's surprising because other Wet n Wild palettes that I've had have been really good you know I've had some of their tin pan comfort zone ones and uh, I've got one of the the bed of roses palette and you know the, the quads that they did um, but yeah that's that's super scrappy as I said hopefully when I pop some other colours on it will help with how it looks but anyway so Anna suddenly popped back up in my recommended feed on YouTube and when I tell you I clicked that button so quickly <laughs> and she explained that she'd been away because she hadn't been well but she's now feeling a lot better and she's back which is awesome and she kept apologising for her English which was brilliant still um, but I have noticed that since she's been because she, what she was going to do was she was going to do the first few films in English and then switch back to Swedish and just do English when she was collabing with people that were English or spoke English as their native language um, while well, she built her confidence back up again but I've noticed so far all of the films she's put up have actually been in English and she's got so much more confident with it again 
she's starting to sound like the old Anna. You know, she's she's not saying, oh, what is the word that I need? Anywhere near as often as she was in the first sort of couple of films. So she's obviously getting her confidence back, which is fantastic to see. This is... Oh, people that have watched my palette collection films know that I'm the kind of person I don't like my palettes to look like they've been used I like them to I clean them before I put them all away because when I pick them up if they're dirty I it kind of blocks me from seeing the colours and it stops me from being as creative with them as I could. I'm not the kind of per some people I know like to see theirs really scruffy and well used and panned and everything. Um, I don't mind seeing pans but I do need them clean and this is no matter how careful I'm being this is all smudging around the edge and that's really really annoying me because it's going across into the pink one now. Ugh, I hate that. Um, this has blended out a little easier on this eye than it did over here. So it is possible that perhaps I've got a dry patch on this eye. And that that's what's causing the problem. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, they're far too harsh on the bristles. Uh, do I risk a slightly fluffier brush to blend? Or shall I stick with this little one? I think I might stick with this little one for a minute. And I'm going to go into Flamingo. Pink and green should never be seen without a colour in between. And I'm about to put them smack down next to each other. Now, if you're going to blend two colours together and you don't want an editorial look, it's best to start off with half on the shade you're blending into and half on the, the bare skin or, you know, primer. Um, because that tends to blend together more effectively. Than if you start above it and work down into it. I don't know why, but on me it just that's just the way it goes. So let's see if we can get this pink to blend into the green without muddying up too much. I'm not holding out much hope, I have to say. Although it's not looking too bad. Getting quite a nice purple there with it. It's blending with the green. I'm not dissatisfied with that. As so long as I can keep it like this without going too muddy. So yeah, um, I've watched quite a few of Anna's new films since she came back. She's done uh, a couple of makeup looks and she's done some ranking my blushes and ranking my bronzers and here's my um, all of my eyeshadow palettes. And oh my word, she has got so many blushes. She's got like 70 odd blushes. I mean, I thought I was bad for highlighters, but wow. Um, like me, she's also got a lot of Blush Tribe palettes. And like me, the Hasina 2 is kind of her colour scheme. Blues, greens and purples. So... We have a lot of similarities there and I'm just really pleased that she wanted to collab with me.
I'm still a little bit nervous about asking people to collab after, you know, one particular YouTuber was extremely rude to me and to Nona and to Anya. Anya's coming back soon, by the way. Um, I've had quite a few people ask me about her pink sweets. Um, she's had some stuff to deal with in her personal life off of YouTube, you know, in the real world. But she will be back. Just like Anna is back. Um, and I just, I love the looks that she produces. I really, really do. I can't wait to see which colours she gets from this. And uh, what look she's going to create. And whether she has as much trouble with it as I am having. I don't know whether I'm having trouble because they've been packed quite tightly. Or if it's just the age of the palette. I might. Because when I've got a palette to try, I don't watch tutorials using it. Even if it's an older palette, and I may have watched tutorials in the past. Um, once I've filmed with this, I might actually watch a few tutorials from when this first launched to see if people were commenting then on the density of the shadow and how it's, you know, quite difficult to blend didn't quite I went a little bit too far didn't I with the uh, with the green on this side so I think set of water just clean off a bit of the pink this side and because uh, I think I prefer it with more green than pink having seen the two options side by side so I wiped it off with my cellar water Dried it with the other end and I shall pop a little bit of um, primer back on it. Give it time to dry when I finish doing this eye. Yes, I just poked myself in that eye. I love this Crown Pebble Primer. It's so good, <clears throat> it really is. This is about my fourth pot of it. Because it's all I use. And as you can see, I'm uh, <laughs> eating bell on this one now as well. But, um, I have a discount with Crown Pebble actually. All my discounts are listed below. I do, um, at the moment she does six different shades. She's got this white one at the very lightest end of the spectrum, which obviously is what I use because, you know, if I want a lighter than my skin tone, I pretty much have to choose a white. Um, and then at the other end, she's got a black and a very, very deep chocolate brown. And then she's got three skin tone shades in the middle. So you will be able to find one that works for your skin tone. I'm just going to bring some of that pink down a little bit. 
I may end up taking that back out again. And again, I may leave it there. I haven't quite decided. Right, let's clean the pink off of this brush. Pop a bit more green on. See, this is what I do. If I decide to make changes to things halfway through, I don't just do it off camera. I let you see how to do it. So that if you've... If when you're ever doing a look, you think... Oh, like I just did. Looking at them side by side like that, I think I prefer with more green and less pink at the front. It gives you the option. I always keep um, cotton buds or... What do you call them in America? Q-tips. I always keep them near. I've got those and I've got, you know, little pad thing with jigs. Alright, back into Flamingo. And just blend that edge. I am feeling a little bit like a jungle parrot, it has to be said. Although, perhaps that was the whole point of this palette. You can also see what I mean here about how the pink seems to blend better into the green. When you start at the green and work out rather than already having pink there and working in. But I think I've got there. Again, I'll just carry that pink down and around the tear duct. The, uh, the last palette bingo I did, I ended up very gothic, very sort of Susie Sue from the 80s, I think. <clears throat> this one I think seemed to be uh, channeling Toya. Clearly I'm having an 80s diva time. But yeah, Anna actually has a cat called Corona as well, which she named long before, because obviously Corona is a, a uh, space astrological term, or astronomical, not astrological. Right, I'm going to go into deeper, which is the blue, and this is a, this is actually a satin so <laughs> this could be interesting. I'm just going to fill in this little bit here and sort of deepen up that outer third. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now follow where you've moved your crease to. I'm holding it a little bit further up the brush just so that I have a little bit more control on the location of the shadow placement but still I'm not holding it here it's one of the worst things you can do you put so much pressure on your lid without realising it you can do a lot of damage Just pop that on the outer 
add that just to deepen up that edge. I am definitely looking like a flamingo. Quite like it though. <coughs> Just wish that green had been a bit more helpful in terms of blending. I mean this side doesn't look as bad but Mm, this here is just really annoying me. As I said, thankfully in in my mirror rather than in my camera, it doesn't look anywhere near as patchy. I'll put photos up on Insta and you'll be able to see that it's it's not as patchy as it looks on camera. It's a problem when you've got high def cameras. Uh, yeah. They show you things you don't always want to see. But as I said, the fact that this side is actually blending easier makes me think that perhaps this is an issue with um, a dry patch on my skin. Which I do tend to get as a side effect of some of my meds. Hmm. Okay. Happy with that so far. Well, happy as I can be with the colours that I pulled. Not exactly what one was hoping for. We started to watch The Haunting of Bly Manor. Got about three episodes in. And, uh, Anybody else watching that? Do you know what? I'm so rude. I haven't even asked you how your day has been yet. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I sincerely hope tomorrow is better. As you can see, I've changed my mind about the pink already. Take that back off again. And if you're watching me over your breakfast, good morning. Hope your day is as fabulous as you are. Right, I'm going to go in with this really flat, I think it's actually a lip brush. And I'm going to go into King of the Jungle, pack pigment on both sides of the brush. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you will kill it. And then I'm going to wet the brush. I'm just using this Makeup Obsession fixing spray. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. I mean you can even use just plain tap water. Right, I'm just spinning this in my knuckles to dry this ferrule off because you don't want moisture getting down here because then it will loosen the glue that's holding your bristles and you'll end up with a stick, not a brush. Right, so I'm going to pop this. Okay, that's got some colour. Into the inner corner. Just bring it out. About a third of the way along the lid. That's pretty. Part of me is tempted to take all of the mats off, just cover my eye with that gold and just put the mats in sequence along the bottom lid. That would be cheating. Right now this side, I do have to do things a little differently because of these super deep creases just here from where my eye was pulled around when I was a five year old trying to determine why I wasn't seeing properly out of it 
Uh, so I do have to actually gently stretch that lid out. But I literally only take it out as far as I need to, to straighten the creasing so that I can get this blended onto the lid. Otherwise what happens is it builds up loosely in those deep creases. And then as it dries during the day, it starts getting into my eye and falling down my face, which is both painful and ruins your makeup look. But you can see as soon as I'd covered the area, I very, very gently put the lid back again so as not to stretch it out any further than it needed to be. And I don't recommend you do that with your lids unless you have the same issue as me with those super deep creases. Right, going into the fifth shade that I pulled, Liar and Cheetah. Which is this kind of... It's a bit deep to be a rose gold, but it's not quite deep enough to be a copper. I don't know, maybe it is a copper when you put it when you see it on the brush like that. It doesn't look like a copper in the pan. Let's just pop this onto the centre third of the lid. It's really quite a pretty colour. And lightly drag the gold across onto it. And then using the very tip of the bristles, just gently buff where it meets that satiny blue. Okay, I like that. Not looking as bad as I was expecting it to, but still a little bit of a hot mess. But we are dealt the numbers we are dealt and have to make the best. Like I said, I've been super lucky with the numbers that I've pulled recently. I've had colours that work really well together. But then I suppose in a palette like this, it's, it's always going to be the case that you're going to get something a little bit odd, isn't it? You can see this lid moves a lot more than my other lid does and I often have to use extra pigment on this lid simply because it moves more. gold across just lightly and then use the tip of the bristles to buff that edge. Hmm. Right my lovelies I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and bits and bobs on and uh, then I shall be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again. But for you, my darlings, after this bubbly bit, I shall be straight back. Hey, hey. Okie dokie. I am back. As you can tell. I did normal brows for once. I know, who am I? Right, I'm going with this flat topped brush into, I think I'll go into the blue deeper and just continue 
that along the lower lash line. I was contemplating doing a wing with this look. I might still do one. Place your bets. Will I have a wing when you come back for the end, for the outro? Or will I have resisted? Right. This brush is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it. Flat topped and chunky. Perfect for fluffing out the lower lash line. Um, you can use any fluffy brush though really. Any smudger brush. Right, I'm going to go into Venomous the green and just use that to gently buff and just soften the lower lash line. Definitely looking very, very, very colourful. But then, given the palette, that's not exactly surprising. Right, I think I'm going to grab my... As we're doing a, a wet and wild, I think I might grab my Colourpop. We're doing cheap American bits. Sorry, economical American bits. This is the Cruella Super Shock Highlighter. You idiots, you fools, you imbeciles! Which is this sort of white base with a pinky, greeny shift to it. And the brush I'm using is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay well over a decade ago now. I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of my brow. And then in the inner corner and run it just underneath to meet. The blue and green that I've got going on underneath my eye. Right, my beauties, I'm going to pause you for one last time while I go and lob some highlighter on my face, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair, place your bets on whether I have a wing when you come back and if I do what colour is it uh, and I will see you once again instantly for the outro I am back right okay uh, for those of you who are taking bets yes I have a wing and it's a white one and I used my Super Beauty Split Hydro Liner in Doodle. Uh, BH Power Pencil in Teal in my waterline. And the Lippy, look how gorgeous this is, look. As you can tell, it's from my heart. Revolution, it's one of their chocolate lippies. And it's shade Honeycomb. Borderline too light for me but kind of gives me like a dead corpse lip, which for this time of year is appropriate, I guess. But this is my finished look using this. Uh, 
got to be honest, not overly impressed by it, particularly that green. You know how hard I am on greens. Um, I will use the rest of the palette before I decide whether or not it's staying or going. But you know, I got a reasonable look out of it. Not as nice as I would have liked, but and I had to work, had to work for it. Um, but I got there. So, if you're one of my 4F beauties, please, please, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you at a rate of knots right now. Um, also double check that your notifications still say all, uh, all of mine for every channel I was following got pushed back to personalised. Now, at the moment it doesn't look like YouTube are actually sending emails out anyway, but they made that change without telling us. They may change it back without telling us, so... Just double check all of your subscriptions do still say all. Not just for me, but for everybody you watch. And then a like, a comment, cheeky little share of the video would be very much appreciated. And once you have done all of that, I'm going to need you to go across to the lovely Anna and check out her film and see which colours she got from the palette what her look is, whether she had trouble with any of the pigments who knows um, but as I said she is newly back from having had a bit of a hiatus so as always my darlings show her the same amount of love that you always show me give her a thumbs up, give her a nice comment let her you know you're from 4F and uh, if you haven't already subscribed to her, why not subscribe? I'm sure she'd love you to join her little crew. Right, if you are new here, either from Anna's channel, or if you tripped over me in some other kind of way, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it here, with me blethering on at you about all kinds of nothing and everything all at once. Uh, that's that's pretty much what you get with this channel, um, but I'm told that I have a very soothing voice, so the blethering is kind of acceptable, maybe? <laughs> It'd be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey, then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube are going to start sending them out again. In the meantime, if you're looking for some me time, do you see what I did there? Yeah, it annoyed me as well. I've got an awful lot of films you can choose from. I've got other collabs, other palette bingos, uh, I've got challenges, makeup reviews, product reviews. Tags. I've even read you my favourite poem. So you're going to find something you like. And as I've said for some considerable time now, basically, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge, my darlings. Right, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.